Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 215 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, November the 1st, 2011, and I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Hilary Rumble. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of Category 5. And you'll be glad you did because we've got lots coming up this episode. For instance, in the newsroom, dun da 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 China has revealed their latest supercomputer, and it's not powered by Intel or AMD. OnStar helps subscribers avoid chance encounters with monsters this Halloween. And a hacker leaked 90,000 social media passwords to prove a point. Change your passwords, people. And lastly, it's confirmed, hashtag Ubuntu is entering the smartphone and tablet market, and Unity will help it get there. Stick around, because these stories are coming up later in the show. You want to know something that's, that's really kind of hilarious, What's and that? yet I just kind of noticed, is that you're very, very short tonight. And people at home are probably like, she's hey. not usually that short, is she? I am short. Krista, Krista came last week for the Halloween oh, special, and she had this, this paper crown. crown on. So we're like, okay, we'll just lower the chair. And and so Maybe this I'll is why this is why I just thought I'd mention that Hillary's not actually three feet shorter than me. There we go. Just Hello. thought I'd make the mention. <laughs> <laughs> I grew. Magic of television, people. You don't know what, what could happen. I you just, never I know. just grew a couple inches. Know. All of a sudden, you know, <laughs> I could lose 10 pounds. <laughs> They say the camera adds 10 pounds, though. Well, then I could lose 20. <laughs> How you been? I'm, I'm fabulous. Yeah? I'm just it's good keep, to see you. Keeping it real. I'm glad to be here, though. Yeah? It's nice. Good, good. I made a CD once called Keeping It Real. Did you really? And now you know the rest of the story. Ooh. So, uh, hold on. Yeah. The CD, like... I feel like there should be a chance for us to hear some of this, no. perhaps in future endeavors. In future endeavors. Perhaps in future endeavors. Okay. Fair enough. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> He's giving me the eyes like, what are you saying? Yeah. Well, you know, hey, tonight we are going to learn, basically what we're going to do is we're going to fall back in love with Ubuntu. <gasps> We've all fallen out of love with Ubuntu. We're, are, we are going to fall back in love. And uh, right. for those of you who are savvy with the terms, that is a pun. So stick around. We're going to be uh, learning all about it. going to be a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> we've got your viewer questions. We've got lots going on. Uh, also, our mobile site is available to you. Cat5.tv slash mobile. Cool. Or, I, am, I, I have dyslexia tonight, I believe. Mobile. mobile. <laughs> Cat5.tv. Yes. Sorry about that, folks. I'm sorry. Right. Knowing no. me, I probably set it up both ways just, so that I, just in case I made that mistake. <laughs> But mobile.cat5.tv or scan that code with your QR scanner mm -hmm. uh, built into your phone. If you don't have a QR scanner, you can get one from your uh, device's app store. But uh, that's a really cool site. And this week, we actually launched version 2.2. We introduced Ooh. the photo gallery, the Category 5 TV photo gallery. Sweet. As well, uh, my blog can actually be read directly in the mobile app. Oh, so, perfect. Awesome. Totally awesome. Sometimes you can find out a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Certainly the photo gallery is something to get excited about, though. I don't know if you've checked it out lately. Cat Category5.tv. Head on over to our website. And what actually happens when you click on photo gallery, there is a link for our Flickr gallery, uh, which is who hosts our photo gallery. Cool. We have photos going all the way back to season one. Oh, wow. We've That's got awesome. season two, season three, season four, and now season five. Sweet. So if you want to check that out, it's category5.tv, and you'll get to uh, check out some of the past photos from category five. And uh, we're going to continually keep that up to date nice. for you as well. Well, that's cool great. Cool stuff, eh? When you're feeling sentimental, just check it out. Yeah, and it's it's neat to to, to kind of see how far we've come even uh, mm -hmm. with the set. I was oh, looking yeah. at them the other day when I was <laughs> uploading some more photos from, I think, season two. <laughs> and just realizing that, wow, that's that's how things used to look around here. It's wild. We're growing. We're always moving and shaking. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and uh, I encourage you to go to our website, category5.tv. Few people have uh, have done so this week, and in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking. Uh, we're going to be looking at your viewer testimonials. Uh, before we do that, I actually have a, a picture Ooh. that came in to us from cool. our good friend Andrew Jameson, uh, okay. who's watching Category Five. Very excited to now have the ASUS ePad Transformer, 
And what's so exciting about that? Well, it's a tablet, but it is running Android 3.2.1. And uh, Andrew sent in a photo of him uh, checking out our website. And while he's there, he's, of course, uh, also... um, Oh, there we go. There it is. Well, he's on our website, but he's watching it the show in the uh, YouTube player directly on the site, which is kind of cool because mm-hmm. the iDevices don't support YouTube, so there's nothing there if you're on a, an iDevice, so that looks very cool. Uh, and it, it, I, I don't mean that. It doesn't support Flash. Pardon me. Right. I should correct myself. Wow. So that's cool, but uh, so that's 100 viewer points, I think, for Andrew oh, totally. to have sent that in, but I see an opportunity to present Andrew with an extra 35 viewer points. What? How can this be? This can be, I don't know if you notice in this photo, but I do. Andrew has strategically held his, uh, well, he's probably charging it directly from his Thermaltake Level 10 Snow Edition chassis. Check that out. That's the same chassis that you see in the, in the intro of Category 5 TV. Yeah, that's right. The, the server mm-hmm. that we use to, yeah. to broadcast our show. It's from thermaltakeusa.com. And because Andrew has, uh, has gone out and purchased one of those and also has, uh, has included that in his Category 5 <laughs> photo, I'm going to give him 135 points tonight. hey uh, Viewer points. So congratulations, Andrew. Thank you for sending those in. Breaking in the points. If you would like a ton of viewer points... Send us your photos of mm-hmm. you watching Category 5. I do tend to give bonuses if, uh, if you include yourself or your kids in the photo, people watching the mm-hmm. show, uh, if you include something like a device that we, uh, that we love here on the show. And mm-hmm. also, we're still uh, we're, we're looking for viewers to send in their postcards. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I love getting real post. I think because we don't, we yeah, don't generally get it true. anymore. No, that's true. You don't get a lot of post other than bills these days yeah so make our day and and send us a little something something that is not bill related yes a little something something from your hometown i like a postcard yeah your home and native it's neat land. to see pictures of uh, where you're from mm-hmm. that uh, that makes me smile so we're working on uh, putting together kind of a postcard wall still trying to figure out how to do it maybe laminate or something yeah so that you can flip them over and read both sides that'd be cool so if you have any suggestions for us hey let us know <laughs> And uh, anybody who is joining us for the first time tonight, uh, please say hi to Hillary in the chat room. Oh, yeah. Let hey, me know. everybody. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm just looking at I the, mean, too. The I, was just, I was just like, oh, yeah, what's hey, everybody. going on? Uh, Greg in Texas. Yes, when I say post, I'm talking uh, mail. The snail mail, some may call it, because it is seemingly slower and archaic compared to, say, archaic, an email. Word. Yes. Indeed. But we still love it. And there's just something <laughs> something like really nice and special and sentimental about like a, a tangible handwritten letter. Mm-hmm. It's just beautiful. You're going to start getting letters. Look at this. Please Open the mailbag every, every Tuesday night. Oh. Dear Hillary. <laughs> oh, another one for Hillary. Another one for Hillary. That would make my day. I'm not going to lie. But you should send them to Robbie too. Send them. Just include me. You know. <laughs> and it's always going to commit. It's going to say, Dear Hillary. And the bald guy, or <laughs> some something crazy like that. Oh, the nerd. Dear. No, yeah. the nerd. Somebody called me adorable once. I do recall that, that and, was, and that you uh, held on to that little gem for a long time. I remember. <laughs> I gave you a billion viewer points for that one. A billion <laughs> points. <laughs> so speaking of people sending us uh, little kudos and saying hmm. hello, I'll... Uh, uh, I'd love to receive your viewer testimonials. Hillary's got some to, to look do. at tonight, but category5.tv, if you head on over to our website, you'll be able to submit yours on the Interact menu, and uh, I encourage you to do that. It uh, means Please a lot when do. we receive those. Oh, yeah. Got one here from Weapons of Mass Instruction um, from Northern Manitoba, saying, Sweet, I found a link here yesterday while scoping out some CC licensed music for my AV classes. Might have been a w- uh, while I was watching the WOW video for Code Monkey too, though. And I got drawn in watching the last episode this morning. Now you're bookmarked and I'll be stopping by often. Great idea, great show, and I can't wait to find the time to wander through your archives. I started sticking um, my toes into Linux a couple of years ago, but everything else got going on in my life and some pretty solid resistance to being able to try to s- installing it at work. And it really wrapped my head around how it works. I look forward to picking up some new ideas and I'm going to probably have some questions. Lots of questions. Thank you for what you're doing and from what I've seen, you're doing it well. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you very much. That's yeah. Sweet. We love to hear from you. 
got another one here um, coming to us from Romas Curtinatus, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, um, from Berlin, Germany. And he also included a picture, which is really cool. Hi, Robbie. I'm using Ubuntu for a couple of weeks now. Found your site about two weeks ago and downloaded some shows. Great work. I like it so much. Greetings from Germany. Ah, so cheers. that was sweet. And what, let's just do one more. This comes to us from Dan saying, I learned how to use HTML in 2000, but had no idea about designing or using existing designs. And the Category 5 web design series explained that very well, completing my understanding. So cool. Thank That's you. Cool. Thank you for sending us that. We yeah, really loved hearing I from you. I love that um, a feature of the show has, has helped to take you kind of to the next level with, mm -hmm. uh, with your knowledge. And greets everybody else, Romas as well. Uh, joining us yeah. from Germany, and uh, we appreciate your viewer testimonials. Mm -hmm. uh, keep them coming, category5.tv, and uh, you can send one in on the Interact menu. Mm -hmm. cool. Please do. We will, uh, we will be right back after this message from our sponsors. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera built directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. You will find us online, www.category5.tv. Join us in the chat room during the live show. And, of course, uh, there are people, including myself and, and uh, mm -hmm. some of the co-hosts, kind of mosey on in throughout the week. Uh, so make sure you check us out, category5.tv. And you'll find the chat room on the Interact menu. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get your questions in that way. You can email us live at category5.tv. You can tweet Fantastic us, too. Stuff. Tweet us. At Robbie Ferguson. At Hillary Rumble. It's easy hard to remember. Easy. I know. I know. <laughs> so um, tonight's episode is brought to you in part by, of course, Eco Alkaline's batteries at cat5.tv slash eco. They are the official batteries of Category 5 Technology mm -hmm. TV, and they power all of our battery-operated devices. Check them out, cat5.tv slash eco. And the fantastic sound tonight, of course, is brought to you by Music Pro in the south end of Barrie. You can visit them online, cat5.tv slash music pro. And while they, uh, while they don't have an online store, uh, I was talking to them, and they mm -hmm. said, you know what, pick up the phone. Give them a call at Music Pro, cat5.tv slash Music Pro for the info. They'll mm -hmm. hook you up with instruments, PA systems, whatever you need, lighting accessories for DJing, anything at all. Uh, they've got it there if it's uh, multimedia, pianos, oh, yeah. everything. Brilliant everything. store. But they'll ship to you if you're in Canada or the U.S., so uh, do check them out, cat5.tv slash Music Pro. G Siegel in the chat room says, Cool beans! And, and it is cool beans. Everything cool beans. we do it's is It's like your cool tagline. <laughs> so much so that I, in fact, have a, a little something for you tonight. I what? could not find cool oh. beans for you, but I did indeed find you a cool bean. Oh. <laughs> it's a jumping bean, and it has, it has a maze that you can, oh, you know, put that on your desk at see. home. And, and that, oh, remember this very special you. moment. Look, guys. It's a jumping bean. It's jumping all over the place. It, it, it like races oh through. God. Whoa. What was it I saw recently? Where is, is oh, uh, Idiot you. Abroad. Idiot Abroad uh, with Carl Pilkington. He was looking desperately <laughs> for a jumping bean in <laughs> well, Mexico. I have one. And he couldn't find one. Because they call them Mexican <laughs> jumping beans, right? That's so right. he just yeah, expected yeah, yeah. that he could find one there, and he didn't find one. <laughs> so, Carl, uh, if you're watching, I'll, I'll send you. A Mexican jumping bean. Oh, too. thank you, Robbie. But that's hey, so sweet. <laughs> that is awesome. I, I love just it. saw that and I thought that's hilarious. <laughs> that's hilarious. What a special little present. Thank mm. you. All right. I love it. And do you know what else I love? Fewer emails. Mm. We love your emails. <laughs> that's how we communicate in a timely through, fashion. Through the email, the computer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Would you like to? Uh, would you like to answer some questions? Because I've would got love to. lots. Fantastic. And so do you guys. So thanks for sending them in. Thanks this question in particular comes to us from Drumstick. Hey, y'all. 
that is a Georgia U.S. greeting. In well, case how you do you do? Here's my question for Robbie. Right. After upgrading to Ubuntu 11.10 from uh, 11.04, I decided to reinstall 11.04. And since I had um, like a slash home on a separate partition, I formatted uh, and installed 11.04. All is fine, except I cannot write files to my external USB drive and get a no space left error um, through the drive. Okay. Um, oh, though the drive does mount, sorry. Uh, yep, there's still space on the USB drive. This box is all Intel except for graphics, which are NVIDIA, and the hard drives are Western Digital. So where should I look and what suggestions do you have to fix this? Hmm. Great show, cool staff, prizes, Oh dear, B E A beautiful women and great support. What else would anyone be doing on Where's a Tuesday the adorable night? host? Ah, uh, adorable co-hosts. Yeah, <laughs> he says thanks a lot for your help. So, adorable host Ryan, <laughs> come on, make me oh, feel good. Dear. Robbie, have you lost weight? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right then. All right, Ryan. It sounds to me like you've got a permissions issue either on your mount point or the drive itself, okay? You've moved mm -hmm. everything over. Perhaps you recreated, uh, so you've reinstalled Ubuntu, but the permissions on that drive belong to your old install. So it sounds to me like it's strictly a permissions issue. Um, way that you can tell that is to go into your terminal and type this, sudo, S-U-D-O, space, Nautilus. N-A-U-T-I-L-U-S. And what that's going to do, you don't want to use that to, to do much, okay? Because that's dangerous. But it will tell you if you go to that drive and you're able to create folders and move things around, it will tell you that, hey, yeah, you it's just a permissions thing because by typing pseudo Nautilus, you're basically running Nautilus, your file browser, as a, uh, a super user, the root user. Good guy saying, hey, you can also use GK pseudo Nautilus. That's if you want to hit Alt F2 and you don't want to have to go into the terminal. I said, you know, you can do it either way. But yeah, Alt F2, GK pseudo Nautilus, or just go into terminal and type pseudo Nautilus. So if that's the case, Ryan, uh, which I think it is, you're going to find that you can now read and write to that drive uh, so you can do things, and that just confirms for us that it is a permissions issue. You don't want to do anything with it because you don't want to uh, you don't want to damage anything on your drive. So what you would do is you you need to find out where the problem lies. If it's your mount point, you need to unmount the drive, and you need to perhaps you know if it's just you on the computer, try ch modding the mount point to 777 so that everyone it's world writable and readable and ex executable. Hmm. So you can now remount the drive to that mount point, and it should have uh, better permissions, but if if it goes further than that and the files themselves are owned by a different user because you may have changed your username and credentials when you reinstalled Ubuntu, um, so things have changed as far as permissions go for those files. So sounds to me like a permissions issue. Do that. Check it out. Um, ch own the files. Gad will mentioning uh, you can ch own the entire folder. So ch own space dash. R with a capital R for recursive, space, uh, whatever your name is, if it's Rye Burke, for example, space, and then the, f the uh, mount point that's mounted uh, to do it recursively. Or you can do it in Nautilus, too. Um, to determine what, what the issue is there, Ryan, and let us know, but uh, that hopefully that points you kind of in the right direction. Uh, but it does sound like a permissions thing. just sounds like the files and folders are owned by the wrong user. Uh, if you need to read those files, you can do it using that pseudo Nautilus and move things around and do all that if you need to. But if you need to actually regain access to the drive so you can mount to this home, then you'll need to uh, you'll need to change the permissions on those folders recursively. Cool. All right. Uh, a Jameson warning. Yeah, you don't want to do a recursive ch mod of 777 because then you can damage some of the access to certain files. Uh, certainly when it comes to programs and executables and things like that, you don't want to do that. Uh, this is his home folder, so most of it's going to be uh, uh, configuration files and uh, and documents and pictures mm -hmm. and things like that. So you should do okay. But uh, uh, He's saying, thanks, Drumstick. Thanks, mm. adorable Robbie. Sounds like I'm on the right track. Sounds like I love you. <laughs> well, there you have it. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, drumstick cool. dinner. His name's Drumstick in the chat room. All right. Cheers. I hope that helps. Yes. And at least, again, it points you in the right direction. There you go. Cool. 
moving onward and upward, got us another email awesome. coming to us from Dan. Hey, Dan. Saying, hello, I wiped my 16 gig micro SD 10.10 install using DD and then attempted to install from the minimal Ubuntu CD. It keeps asking to download items, but I have no internet connection. This loop oh. is unending and all options on CD can provide the same result. How can I get a minimal install without an internet connection? Wow. Hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's kind of a horse of a different color. Last week, uh, Dan was asking about getting minimal install on his 16 gig micro SD card. I didn't realize you didn't have an internet connection. That complicates things a little. It sure does. <laughs> I mean, one of the, one of, I think the amazing things about Linux and the way Linux in installs, mm -hmm. the way Linux configures itself on boot is that it communicates with repositories they're called servers on the internet yeah and make sure that everything's up to date make sure that you have all of the tools that you need mm -hmm. in order to operate your computer so with you not having an internet connection you're trying to do this install and it's a minimal install so there's a lot lacking from the iso that needs to be obtained off of the internet it can cause some problems yeah one tool that's kind of cool if you know the uh, packages that you do need there's a tool called apt on cd a p t o n c d Let's see if I can find it here. Aptoncd.sourceforge.net. That's their website. And this tool allows you to basically configure a CD that has those files for apps so that you can set up a basically a CD-based repository. So you can create a CD that then becomes a repository for your install. So as long as you get the right tools, uh, you know, like if you need, for example, your X environment or whatever it is that you need to get without an internet connection, it can be challenging. The easiest thing for you to do, because it's a micro SD, would be to get a hold of an internet connection and set it up on that connection, and then you're golden. Once it's installed, sure, you won't get your updates, you won't get the latest and greatest versions of, you know, uh, OpenOffice or LibreOffice, whatever you choose to run, they won't come to you uh, automatically as they do to, to internet connected users. But at least you can get that install set up on that micro SD card and then you take that card home or wherever it is that you're operating without internet and it would be great. And make copies of it so that you can use it on your other computers without having to have an internet connection. Brilliant thing about Linux is that you can make copies. Not only will they work across multiple types of hardware in most cases, because generally speaking, it's going to detect new hardware and changes in hardware when you boot. But also, pardon me, it's legal. You're allowed to do that. In fact, you're encouraged to do that. So in a case like Linux, you know, you can create your own drive and then make copies so that you can use it on other computers and, and you're happy. So easiest case scenario is for you to get a hold of an internet connection, Dan. Create that thing with internet access. That's going to just make your life so much easier, honestly. And if you can just, you know, spend an afternoon getting it set up exactly the way you want with internet, then you're not going to have any troubles. And then you go back to where it is that you have no internet. You've already got it created, configured. Everything's there. You don't have to be back and forth all the time. But either way, you're going to need the internet. Even to use apt on CD, you've got to have access to those repositories initially. So I think that's, you know, you might as well just build it uh, with an internet connection and then go from there and then take it to a, a non-connected environment. Cool. Makes sense. I'd be interested to know, Dan, what, like what what it is that is causing him to set this up on, with mm -hmm. no internet connection. Yeah, like just why? of interest, you know, because I kind of picture our world as being very connected these days. Like I can't walk a few blocks without having Wi-Fi internet access available to me free. So, um, so you know, where are you from, or is is there something else mm -hmm. that's keeping you from having internet access to be able to do this? But I think you'll be able to find it anyways. So, thank you very much for the question, Dan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Looks like we've got time for one more quick question. Sure. I think. Fantastic. This comes to us from Catherine McClary. Hey, Catherine. The AMD A-Series Lanlo um, APUs have been out for several months now, and there are several PCs available to buy which use them. How do they compare to Intel Core i357 Sandy Bridge CPUs for cheapskate PC gamers like myself and my teen daughter? Her old PC lags terribly when playing Dragon Age Origins, and I can't play anything newer. I play some Civ 5, but mostly older games, especially hmm. via DOSBox. Right, okay. So. so I have a feeling that uh, pretty much any modern 
architecture CPU is going to do just great for you. <laughs> I mean, you're dealing with stuff that is very minimal as far as its requirements. Mm -hmm. As far as the question about AMD versus Intel and things, I think that gap is really being bridged between the two companies because while Intel was really pushing for the APU, the, the integrated processor with the graphics and everything, AMD was still very focused on the x86 architecture and just, or the i386, I should say, uh, really focused on application launch times, things that these days is really not as, as important as um, really good performance in games and multimedia rich applications, being able to watch Blu-ray movies and things. So their focus has kind of shifted with the, Len uh, is it Leno? I think they're called, or something Lan like Leno. Lan the A series, anyways. <laughs> Um, those processors are really shifting the gears for AMD because they're finally entering, kind of basically exiting that realm where, where mm -hmm. they were, where they were kind of trapped in this architecture from the late 80s. And now they're, you know, they've been doing well with that, but now they're moving into more multimedia rich, really game driven, multimedia driven, and very decent graphics cards integrated in the chip. So the advantage of the A series is that it's going to be lower power consumption. It's going to require a little bit less power, uh, it, but it's going to be a little bit slower than the Intel. But will that matter to you? Because here's the mm -hmm. thing: it's very much less expensive. Okay. So in your environment, because you're gaming, I think it would do just fine. I think you do just fine with anything really that's that's reasonably new. Um, I prefer Intel because I'm I'm a pretty you know I I drive I drive these things. To the, to the ground <laughs> and I push them really hard <laughs> but for what you're doing I think you do just fine with finding a, a decent system that you know is a good price point for you that has a half decent processor sounds like you know enough about these things to know that yeah this is the better end of the uh, the uh, AMD series as far as multimedia goes right but they're cheap because they are low end processors if you will so so it's a you know it's just kind of making a wise decision. What I would do though is price out price out two processors in the same price range. So AMD versus Intel, say it's two hundred bucks. These two processors are the the same price. How do they compare? Yeah. Now get on the internet, get into Google, and say, mm -hmm. okay, here's the AMD processor versus here's the Intel processor. We already know that okay from your research that these are about the same price and they're within your price point. So now get the benchmarks and see. Yeah which one's going to perform better because somebody out there on the internet I almost guarantee you has already tested those processors against each other and at the very Probably, least there will yeah. be forums of people who say you know here's the advantages to those specific processors uh, A. Jameson just uh, reiterating AMD is good for budget systems if you want to uh, if you want to go hog wild with power and use a super amount of power then go Intel so hmm. true but again, that gap is kind of being bridged because AMD is creating better processors with that A-series. So you, you could get away with that pretty well and save some money. But go Intel. <laughs> they don't pay me to say that. <laughs> well, there you have it. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, now, somebody was uh, in the chat room there just before uh, we jump into the news. Yep. I'm sorry. I, there was a statement with regards to the previous question. I didn't want to miss it. I hope I can catch it. Was it Agamotto? Um, Fill me in real quick. I'm looking. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a conversation about Starbucks. There's lots but, going uh, on. <laughs> chat room is a fun place to be. If you're, if you're here live, <laughs> get into the chat room. It's a lot of fun. And our website's category5.tv. It's the front end hub for all that stuff. It was about installing a link, USR slash Ben slash GK sudo. No, that's no, far. Different. That's too far back. Oh, oh, here we go. I'm all over the map. Agamotto, thank you. At seven twenty four and thirty three seconds. <laughs> Talking about the the distribution and minimal install and and having to use the internet to get updates. Mm -hmm. This was Dan's question. Uh, Dan Agamotto says, maybe this isn't what you're looking for, but. Would this not be a good case for the DVD install version of Ubuntu? Oh. Which is an interesting point, because now when Dan said, Ag Agamotto, that, that he's using the, the minimalist install, of course I'm thinking, okay, minimal. We've got to build upon that. But the DVD version comes with pretty much everything. Oh, okay. So you can install it without the repositories, and then you can strip it down. You can pull stuff out. Hmm, so I it's see. not going to be anywhere as, as clean as the minimal. 
because if you're trying to get away from the GNOME desktop or whatever, then you're going to have problems. But just a suggestion there that came in the chat room, Dan, and I thought Good that work. that was wor worth uh, mentioning as well. Just if you are stuck without internet, then that's an op option for you as well. That's a good suggestion. Great. And that's yeah. why we keep you around, chat room. You're full of great ideas. And they're just such a fun bunch. They are. They're such the best. a fun bunch. Just the best. Mm hmm Oh, you ready for the news? Oh, yeah. Take her oh, away. Yeah. Here are the top stories from the Category 5.TV newsroom. China has revealed its newest supercomputer, and even though it's unlikely to crack the world top 10, something about this supercomputer has astonished the tech community. It is powered neither by Intel or AMD processors. Revealed last week at a conference in Japan, or er, not Japan, Jinan, China, uh, and profiled in the New York Times, the Sunway Blue Light MPP supercomputer uses a chip designed by the Chinese themselves. And it's not the Chinese microprocessor the supercomputing, com the supercomputing uh, community was expecting. In other words, the Chinese are developing two microprocessors that could shift not only bragging rights in the worldwide supercomputer game, but the general market for server chips. Jack Dongera, the University of Tennessee professor who oversees the annual list of the top 500 supercomputers, told Wired that this shows that there is a significant effort underway in China to build multi-core processors that can be put into the world's fastest computers. He cautions us not to think of this development strictly in terms of supercomputing, saying, there is a low end that where these chi th sorry. There's a low end that where these chips can work. You can imagine these chips replacing all the Intel chips in China. Neither Ooh, Intel wow. or AMD have commented. As a bit of fun yesterday for Halloween, OnStar offered its users a Monster Dodger service. Terry Inch, director at OnStar said, Halloween is a fun holiday and our new Monster Dodger service reflects that. This year, in addition to OnStar providing help to subscribers who need directions to the closest costume shop or convenience store to pick up candy, we are offering families an entertaining button push opportunity. Subscribers looking for a Halloween treat yesterday could push their blue OnStar button and ask for the location of the nearest monster and then dodge the potential encounter. Fun for the kids and brought a lighthearted mood to the emergency service. Now, Hillary. Yes. I mean, that sounds cute and all fun and games, right? It does. Right? But, but I, I don't want to find a monster. Why am I picturing a poor little four-year-old or five-year-old sitting in the back seat as OnStar says, don't turn left, there's a monster yeah. down there. And the poor kid's like... <laughs> Seriously. Scared out of their mind because it's so realistic. It's like the movies. It is like This is movie. OnStar. Don't turn left. There's a monster there. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Scary stuff. And then the kids are never going to go down that street again. They'll be like, no. Oh, yeah. Don't go towards Billy's house. There's a witch in, in the <laughs> forest over there. Oh, yeah. Kids terrible. are now petrified of their towns. Petrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Sweden has suffered its worst ever data leak after an anonymous hacker hijacked the Twitter accounts of a prominent MP and released details of more than 90,000 private email accounts. The hacker struck last week when he disclosed the password and email details of several Swedish political journalists. The identities the identitors the hacker's identity remains unknown his online name though is sc3a5j so stay away from him in an interview with express a newspaper he said he had masterminded the biggest internet breach in sweden's history to remind people to change their passwords more often he said i dumped this information to let people know that they handle their information wrongly Many web pages are not up to scratch, and consumers need to know they should never use the same passwords for different services on the web. He goes on to say, this is how we got into Twitter accounts as well. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, be wary. Yikes. Canonical plans to expand its Ubuntu Linux distribution so it could be used on smartphones, tablets, and other touch interface consumer electronics, said Canonical founder Mark Shuttleworth. Referring to the average user, Shuttleworth said, Computers users are starting to do their computing across a broader array of de devices, a broader array of devices and form factors. He also goes on to state that Canonical wants to bring Ubuntu to all per personal computing form factors on phones, tablets, and smart screens. 
Right now, Shuttleworth is at the Ubuntu Developer Summit in Orlando. At this conference, he is hoping to raise enthusiasm on the part of volunteer developers who Canonical will need to help develop the platform and provide applications for the expanding OS. Shuttleworth has effectively answered that Canonical's controversial move to the Unity interface was done in part because Unity would be better suited to work across different platforms, particularly those relying on touchscreen interfaces. You can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our super awesome community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. I should just say a very special thanks to Dan who uh, contributed to the newsroom uh, this you, week Dan. as well. Thank you, Thank you. And uh, yeah, really nice to be receiving your emails mm -hmm. and, and your thoughts uh, with regards to what we should be talking about in the news. Terrific. Tonight, uh, the show is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, and you'll find them online, cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Check out that awesome device. Also, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. Fun online game. You can download the free uh, application right there on the website, cat5.tv slash Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. I'm Hillary Rumble. Hillary, I don't know if I have mentioned it to you before, but I kind of saw that coming with Ubuntu and Canonical. Did you? Just that drive with, ever since I've, you know, they've introduced Unity and taken mm -hmm. over with Unity, it's really felt touchscreen-ish to me. Oh, yes, I do remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah the interface looked very, is not, it's, like, totally... It's designed for this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, totally. Right? I, I do remember you saying that, yes. But the problem with that is it feels really awkward to me as a mouse user. Because you're like, mm, I just want to poke my screen, not use yeah. my mouse. But it just yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't be comfortable. It wouldn't work mm -hmm. even if I had a touch screen. Now there are some nice devices out there. I think in particular there's the HP Touch Smart, for example, right? And just thinking, Touch Smart. I'm just going to do a quick search. Yeah, sure. The, re the reason that I'm thinking about this particular device mm -hmm. is uh, Gadwell was mentioning in the chat room that it just isn't practical because of the the form factor of these things. But their their device actually lays right down, so it almost becomes a, a desktop style screen, right? So yeah. you're, you're touching on mm -hmm. on here so then i can see that working but then you're taking up this huge footprint on your desk yeah, right true. versus uh, a mouse mm -hmm. or in my case i use a trackball so i only oh, i literally okay, only use okay, this yeah. much footprint on my desk hmm. so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me i, I don't want a touch screen interface yeah don't like it don't mm -hmm. want it i don't have the device for it but that canonical has announced mark shuttleworth at uh, at the ubuntu uh, developer summit mm -hmm. today uh, and yesterday had mentioned that uh, that they are indeed pushing toward mobile devices. But I don't have that. <laughs> so tonight we're going yeah. to fall back in love with Ubuntu mm -hmm. and make it work for our mouse. Okay. For our desktop computer. The way that you expect it to. The way that you want it to when you're using your computer. Because I don't know about you, but that's what I use. I mean, wow. I love my, my mobile device, too. I want to see Ubuntu on my mobile device. I would love to see Ubuntu on my tablet. But I don't want the tablet interface on my desktop. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I have Ubuntu 11.10. This is the latest version the very of latest. Ubuntu. The very latest. You'll see right out of the box, I've got Ubuntu and Ubuntu 2D. All right, so let's log in. With a recently changed password. With a recently changed password. <laughs> Thank you. To avoid. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. So you're going to see exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. So imagine, okay, yeah, I'm going to be able to reach up with my finger and touch all these buttons here. It's got a, a real... It's, I've talked about it on the show before. It's designed for touchscreen, and it's mm. obvious that it's designed for touchscreen big bold buttons which is fine but it's not designed to be used by somebody who's using a mouse mm -hmm. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump into my terminal because tonight what i'm actually going to do i want to i want to walk you through the steps now okay. of course the next version of perfect boon 2 is going to actually do all this for you there's going to be a little uh, toggle switch that allows you to oh, wow. basically convert 11.10 into um, a, a gnome 2 style desktop based on uh, an older version of Ubuntu. But 
what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how this is done and what it is that we're actually doing. Yeah. Um, Gadwill, we're not indeed switching to GNOME 2.3.2 or 2.32. We want to actually stay with GNOME 3. We're not going to downgrade your computer. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to make your computer compatible with this interface. Okay. We're not going to use GNOME Shell. We're not going to do any of that stuff. So here I am in the terminal. Okay. On my brand new out of the box. I haven't touched anything. It's just it's got its updates and that's it. This is Ubuntu 11.10. So I'm going to go first of all sudo Oh, I do have mouse or keyboard. There we go. It's just a little slow. Hello. sudo apt-get update is the first thing you want to run. That's going to get your up-to-date repository information. Enter your password as necessary. There we go. It's gone through my updates. It's going to get those off the internet for me. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to get the ability to take Ubuntu back to a GNOME 2 style interface. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to use session fallback. So that's where the fallback comes in. Session fallback uh, is uh, going to allow us basically to flip that switch when we first turn on our computer. It, it turns into a session. So, and it's actually what's, uh, what you're going to recognize if you are installing GNOME Shell. Similar kind of thing. But we're going to do this with as minimal you know, amount of stuff as possible. When I type, it <laughs> seems to be taking a moment to get in there. You are faster than the computer. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Okay, so sudo apt-get with a dash, install, and then gnome session. There should be a dash there. Let's fix it. There we go. Okay, so you can see that now. sudo apt-get install gnome session fallback. All right, nice and simple. This is going to give us about 40 megs worth of stuff. And uh, once that's in, we're going to be able to switch our session over to uh, GNOME Classic without having to install Ubuntu Shell, or GNOME Shell, pardon me. There we go. 40.2 megs of additional stuff. You'll notice that we're, we're going to get the a la carte menu editor, uh, as well as a couple of other things, but we're not getting the full out GNOME Shell. It's going to be really quite minimalist, and it's only 40.2 megs. So we're going to say yes to that. We're going to let that go. And again, it's actually installing all this stuff, Hillary, right off yeah. the internet. I mm -hmm. don't need disks. This is uh, where it really comes in handy to have that yeah, high-speed internet seriously. connection. right? So this is going to go through and get all that stuff for us. That's pretty good. Pretty good. It's moving pretty, pretty good speed. <laughs> This is Category 5 Technology TV, and you'll find us online at Category5.tv. We welcome your questions, and your questions are what direct the uh, show's content. Mm -hmm. Category 5, uh, you can email us live at Category5.tv. Please send me emails, because mm -hmm. I love reading them. Any co-host does, but I'm just saying. <laughs> just, do it. Just, just do it. All right, that's coming along. Getting the panel applet. This is live. This is happening in real time. So you yes. see exactly, <laughs> pardon me, exactly how long this takes. And how to go about doing it. There we go. It yeah, is it's done. Yeah. It's uh, deferred some processing. There we go. Okay. So now let's simply log out of our computer. Click on the, uh, the gear up at the top left. I think I'm probably working this thing to death. I'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to close that, see if that makes any difference. There we go. Okay, click on the gear, and then go log out. Are you sure you want to close all programs and log out of the computer? I'm going to say, yeah, log well, out. I'm pretty sure. Yep. That's what we want to do. Here we go. All right. 
So now you're going to see that if we click here, we have GNOME Classic. That's what that gave us. So switch it. Okay, so I've switched that to GNOME Classic. We're mm -hmm. no longer selecting Ubuntu. Right. All right, enter your password and hit enter. And here we go. So this is step one. This is going to get us to that kind of classic style Ubuntu desktop. Okay. And remember, we didn't have to install GNOME Shell here. Okay, now we're going to go up to our name, click on it, and go System Settings. Once we're in there, we're going to go into Appearance. And now this is a little bit of a workaround. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my theme down at the bottom here. Okay, change it from Ambiance to Radiance, and that's going to get rid of the black and just turn it to a, a nice kind of okay, gradient I white. See. Okay, so that works. Okay, now I'm going to close out of that. Now I'm going to go back into Terminal because we're going to learn the terminal tonight. Okay, and there's two things left that I want to install, so I'm going to go sudo apt-get install. You're going to love this. Human-theme. Okay, I'm going to do this on, two li on one line. So I'm going to install the theme, and then I'm going to install gconf-editor. Okay, so we're going to get that original human theme from Ubuntu, and we're going to get the gconf-editor so that we can edit our G configuration. There Perfect. we go. This is going to give us four megs of data. All right, much better response time now. I much prefer the human theme to the zombie theme. Yeah, you know, something about or the zombie theme. theme or Ambiance kind of feels zombie-ish with all the darkness. Yes, so. It's done, all right? Beauty. So that's done and done. So what I want to do is now I'm going to type the words gconf-editor, okay? So now this is my configuration editor. I'm going to go into apps. And then we want to find Metacity or Metacity. Hello. Hmm. That's telling me. See, this is what's neat about when you run something through the terminal. So you can see the actual errors. Yeah. And it says that there is a, uh, a problem there. Index value too large. Just in case, I'm going to log out and then log back in because I haven't done that since installing the theme and gconf config. I'm not having to reboot the whole computer. You'll notice that GNOME Classic is now set as my default, so I'm always oh, going to get yeah. that. G Siegel thinks that I like to live on the wild side. And I would agree. Yeah? Definitely. If you'd like, if you want to use the inter uh, the GUI at this point, you can just go down to System Tools, Configuration Editor. There we go. All right, a log out and a log in did it for us. Perfect. Now I've brought up Apps, Metacity, Windows users. You'll recognize this. It looks very much like a registry. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Scroll down, mm -hmm. and you'll see one called Theme. All right, I'm going to double-click on the word Radiance. Remember we changed it to Radiance? Well, that's good because now GDK theme is set to Radiance, but now we want our Metacity theme set to human, human with an uppercase H. If I hit enter, see what happened? Oh. It looks very much like the original Ubuntu human theme. I see. Okay. So now there's one thing that, uh, that's left to do here, and that's these bad boys. So scroll up a little ways, okay, and you see button layout. Mm -hmm. Double click on the value at the right, and we want to change that order. So first of all, we want to put the colon, which is the, the name of the program, and then these are going to be relational to that. So I'm going to highlight the word close and cut it, and I'm going to paste that at the end, but I'm going to add a comma after maximize. All right? Hmm. So now, and now I've got to delete that last colon, because that's where it was, okay? So now it looks like colon minimize, maximize, close. When I hit enter, oh. okay, I've moved those. Now you'll see that there's one other thing missing from the top left hand side. Okay, so before that colon, I'm going to add the word menu, okay, and hit enter, and you'll see that now I have oh, sweet. 
your standard menu just as you would have. Okay. So now the final button layout says menu colon minimize comma maximize comma close full stop no period okay so that's all there is to that mm -hmm. now final step is basically okay we've got the theme we've got all that working let's just kind of finalize it and we're going to do that with something that's already included with 11.04 ubuntu we're going to go straight to another orange theme grab those leaves close out of that and now if you bring up your Nautilus window, you'll see this feels much more like home, much more like the old style Ubuntu, <laughs> much more like, you know, GNOME 2, but yet we're still looking at GNOME 3, believe it or not. We're still looking at Ubuntu 11.10. You're still going to get all your Ubuntu 11.10 updates. You still have access to Ubuntu Software Center. You still have the ability to install the applications that you can get on Ubuntu 11.10 with Unity, just that you're not trapped into that Unity interface. You now have a much more familiar interface. A couple of things are a little bit different. You'll see that the clock is centered up here. That can be moved. You'll see that uh, system settings is still on my name, and shutdown, logout, and restart is under shutdown as well. When you reboot your computer, everything's going to remain. Everything mm -hmm. is hard set now and you're not going to lose those settings if you reboot. So that is now your interface. You can go onto the internet, find yourself a, a great wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper. Uh, a good place to start is gnome-look.org, and there you will find some GTK-licensed uh, desktop wallpapers hmm. and themes and things like that. So that's just to get you started making <laughs> Ubuntu 11.10 feel a little bit more like the old style Ubuntu, and that's what's going to help you to fall back in love with <laughs> Ubuntu with 11.10. Oh, kick it at old school. Old school. Your old school love. Indeed. <laughs> this is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. Just a couple of minutes left, if you can believe. Oh, right at the end time, of the show. Time, time flies. flies when you're having fun, I tell you. Yeah. It's Any questions for us in is. the chat room? Say hey. Yeah, let us know. Quick time if you got anything to say. You know? Did you dress up yesterday? Did I? Yes, yeah. I was the queen of hearts. The queen of hearts. Mm -hmm. You, ha She hasn't seen last week's show, people. I didn't, but I did. I checked out the website and I did see did some pics see the, yes. of the costumes, which okay. I liked. Yes. I really enjoyed she those. She still doesn't know. She still doesn't know. Watch episode no, 214. Just, just tell me. Well, you said you were the, the queen of hearts, but uh, on last week's show. What was I on last week's show? <laughs> Let's go to the category 5tv Let's TV. check it out. Well, Cuz you go don't to the know photo gallery. what sort of fun things are online. Robbie's always always doing these fun little these little photo updates gallery. all the time. We don't know what's happening. So the only way you can stay connected is by checking it out all the time. Oh my Lanta. Is that ever funny? Isn't that awesome? And you just happen to be the Queen of Hearts. What are the odds? Oh, I... Wow. There's Eric down there. I like Eric. <laughs> <laughs> that looks awesome. Yeah. Oh, we had a lot of fun. That And I took great. my son out trick-or-treating. Yeah. He was, he was Captain Zach, and I was Commander Daddy. I and, like uh, that. That's yeah. so cute. But I was very much as Spock. And, and <laughs> if I could count the number of people who said, Oh, look at you, little guy. Star Wars. And you're like... That's I no, I no. threw out the candy from that house because it's poison poison just poison filled with just terrible things unbelievable a couple people got it though some people were like they thought it was the coolest one guy I mean look at me people look at me and one guy walked up to me and said dude you even got the haircut for it you're like I was like um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just kind of went that. like that and walked away. <laughs> I, I went guess. into I went into a, a fast food restaurant because I, I I got off work, and I zipped right home, got mm -hmm. the kids, and we went out. Yeah, I got yeah. dressed and went out. I didn't get dinner until eight thirty nine o'clock yeah. at night, so I was starving. Just figured I'd pick up something quick. So I just I didn't do the drive through. I thought no, I'm dressed up. I'm, I'm gonna you gotta I'm gonna go milk in. this thing you as best as to. I can. Totally. I didn't wear it to work because it just it didn't it didn't work with. The, 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 the atmosphere of the, Well, yeah. I would have been the only one dressed up and everyone would have mm. been laughing and jeering <laughs> and it would have been like high school. So oh. I just figured I'd avoid that whole situation. So, oh, but it was kind of neat to be driving around as Spock and yeah. people actually thought it was cool instead of dorky. Oh, yeah. But I went into this fast food place and they just, 
they thought it was a riot. Like that's awesome. everybody coming out from the kitchen and stuff and coming to that's see me. Great. And, oh, can you do the Vulcan <laughs> hand thing? That's so cool. And they're trying and they're like So that was that was the joy of I like that the evening. I admire your boldness to No, boldness would be doing it on November fifteenth or True, I guess. July. You know, just in the heart of July, just well, maybe we I'm going to get some dares, aren't I? I double dog dare <laughs> you. Well, in the um, similar vein of mm. trekkiness, there was an email that came in. Was not it? exactly um, a <laughs> question, but a photo oh, yeah? sent in to us from Leland oh, saying, cool. Hey, Captain and Spock, where is the Wirecast Enterprise Bridge? Tell Scotty not to beam us up until after they bring us our dinner. <laughs> and here is the photo There's from. Let's see if I can pull this, this up. Our viewer Leland. I haven't seen this yet, Leland. So. Oh, surprise! Yeah, surprise! Surprise! surprise. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna save this to my desktop. So we'll check it out because we Looks love like your I'm pictures. Looks like I'm gonna owe Leland a little bit of viewer pointage as well. A little bit of well. points. Gotta send those his way. And yeah, there we are. So what's the what's the description of this? This it says again. A Captain and Spock, where is the Wirecast Enterprise Bridge? Tell Scotty not to beam us up until after they bring <laughs> us our dinner. There we go. Thanks, Leland. Uh, yeah, that would be fun. We haven't uh, done much green screening. We've been doing some testing. I did a uh, stress test over the weekend. And thank you to those of you who participated. <laughs> Basically, we took the new server and we said, mm-hmm. okay, well, how much can we really push through this thing? We did green screening wow. and it was phenomenal like cool. everything just performs so well That's so awesome. i think it's going to be possible and and uh, so maybe there is a chance leland that we will see um some green screening during the live broadcast because wirecast is fully capable of that uh, really what it comes down to is how good is our lighting so we might need to get uh some lighting for the backdrop if we yeah, wanted to maybe, do green yeah. screen and also how good is the camera as you can tell the wide angle camera that we're using it's 1080p but the i don't know if it's the lens or what it is but it's not as crystal clear as here we've got Ooh. a 720p ah. camera that is just <laughs> it's just so sharp and That's beautiful sharp. and you know it's just getting to that point where yeah. we have cameras that are that sharp uh, and unfortunately you know the big cameras like the professional cameras yes. they run into the the tens twenties thirties thousands so they're very pricey and i don't see us doing that anytime just right away but uh but one day Someday. season 15 we'll get there Oh yeah. I think we do well with what we have and we of appreciate course. everybody's support and it's been uh, it's been tons of fun. I'm so excited that season 5 is here and we're doing well. I know. Having a fun time. It's so. fabulous. Yeah. And we're just going to get better and better every season. Always improving, always new things coming. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going on in the chat room? Any, Gad will, any funnies? Uh, Gad will got a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles snuggly like oh. I'm talking Moo Moo here. <laughs> and uh, and we put him on green screen, and it was it was amazing. His whole body disappeared. Oh, but that's awesome. here's what was cool. I said to Gadwell, "You have green eyes, don't you?" And he's like, "Why?" Yeah, I do. And he had two holes in his really? head. Really? Oh, that's. <laughs> and you could see the scene behind him. That's it was, lurky. It was pretty awesome. But it makes you think. Okay, well, what happens if you're doing green screening and and you have somebody yeah. on the set with green eyes? Because it was it was that pretty intense, obvious, and Gabby eh? will tell you that it was it was very obvious. Um, but we'll That's definitely find some screen funny. grabs at some point of that. Yeah, definitely grab those and put those up. Hilarious. Yeah. I never would have thought it'd pick up on Eye eyes like that yeah. sensitivity. Yeah. Boy, that's wild. Oh, apparently Gad will uh, has changed his avatar on the website uh, to oh, match from that encounter. A screenshot so, of that. Um, if you have a link to your profile, Gad, we'll, oh. that I can bring up real quick. We've only got 30 seconds mm-hmm. left on the show. We'd love to check it out. But I'll be happy a to check it out. A little something yeah. something. Mm. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Surprising. Everybody have fun this week? Learn lots? We hope so. If, uh, if you sent a question and didn't hear from us, uh, please let us know, but we do try to attend to all your questions in a timely fashion. Mm-hmm. But live at category5.tv. That's where the party's at, people. Michael Iowa joining us again tonight. Cameron, Greg in Texas, mm-hmm. Agamotto. Nice to see us. The old gang. Drumstick, of course. Yazid1965, good to see you. AS759. Yes. Cheers. 
and and some reminders to write us letters. Write us letters. From Yazid. Send us your uh, <laughs> send us your uh, postcards. You'll post in the mail. The post. We'll check it in brilliant. two weeks by the time it, it gets here. To receive your post. Call blind me. That'd be that'd be awesome. Is what it is really. So yeah, well, um, got a little something to show people. I'm working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Some I'm joker excited. made it so that you had to log in in order to oh. view profiles. Oh. Robbie. Unbelievable. Top Security. secret. Security. Oi. And there he is. Oi, oi. Oh, but he's got his sunglasses on. Oh. But that's part of But you can see our stars. Yeah, okay. Behind his, uh, his moo moo. That's, that's pretty great. <laughs> pretty great boo moo. Brilliant. All right. Well, thanks, Gadwell. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. So nice having you here, Thank Hillary. Thank you. Good to be nice here. Nice to see you. And uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Bye-bye. Good night.